Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. It is my first book review of the year. I don't do these often. Today we're gonna to be talking about Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. I got really emotional filming this video, I'm not gonna lie, there were some tears shed. I am Colombian American and a lot of what happens in this book definitely resonates with me and my family. So, so just keep that in mind as I go through this video. I must have been so emotional that I didn't realize that I confused our protagonist who is named Talia. I confused that with her mom who is Elena. So the only reason I chose this book was because I was scrolling through the app and I saw the word Colombia. So I'm Colombian, as is the author. The author's Colombian American. So am I. My parents came to this country from Colombia, I want to say over 20, 30 years ago, in order to give my brother a better life and then later I was born. I found out that this was a multi-generational story about a family who is split apart between two countries, Colombia and the United States. I had to get it and it definitely resonated with me. This is a story that I feel like a lot of immigrants can relate to. Interestingly enough, I don't have a lot of Colombian friends, so there was something so special and fun about reading a book that obviously speaks about Colombia, but also has a lot of like slang and like certain parts of the country that I am familiar with because I've only been able to visit twice, but there are some parts that I remember. My mom is from the capital. It's a multi-generational novel, so you are following the perspectives of our protagonist who is Elena. She is stuck at a corrections facility because she did something. Don't want to say what it is. You find out very early in the book. Um, it's kind of implied in the book blurb that it's not really her fault and I definitely agree I would have probably done the same thing if I was in her position But basically she finds herself in a corrections facility She decides to break out with a bunch of girls and I thought that was gonna be the main premise and it's really not So I'm really happy about that basically they break out and she has a limited amount of time to reach back to where her father is He has the tickets and everything ready for her to go to the United States to be reunited with her mother and her two other siblings Who she did not grow up with it's been 15 years since they've been a family together and she was just just a little baby at that time. So yes, this is a family that's torn up between two countries because of immigration, because of everything that comes with being a citizen or trying to get a green card in the US. It's, it's not easy, there's a lot of corruption. Um, it could be a very sticky situation and I know my parents definitely felt that when they came to this country as well. It's a beautiful book, it's actually really short. There's only, there's only 191 pages. It is sad, I will probably say trigger warning for sexual assaults, trigger warning for maybe some mild animal cruelty. Very beautifully written story. I like how it doesn't spoon feed you anything like it's very um, direct and there are some Spanish words just keep that in mind I am fluent in Spanish but sometimes reading certain words can get a little difficult so I just had my phone ready in case I needed to look up any particular words or like if I was sounding them out properly I, mean, I feel like my parents definitely sheltered me much like Talia's parents they sheltered me in a way where I wasn't aware of what was going on as a kid and the struggle that my parents would it was hard, I know it was hard, but I didn't see as much of it because they wanted me to enjoy my childhood and they wanted to shield me from that type of pain. Um, it does make me feel guilty though because I feel like, you know, when you're younger and you're like, all right, when I become my parents' age or when I'm older, I'm going to support my parents more. Like, I'm gonna make sure to give them as much as they've given me. And I feel like now as an adult, I haven't reached that point in my life yet. And you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and I wish I could help my parents more and kind of repay them for what they've given me because they've given me so much and I cannot imagine what it was like for them to, to give up everything they know just to come to this country, you know what I mean? Like, I can't even picture doing that myself. Like, I think I'm too selfish for that. And they really, they gave up everything to come here because they haven't been back in a really long time and all my families were there. They can't come over here. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, things happen and I, I know I shouldn't think like that, but sometimes it just happens. I feel like this book just brings out a lot of emotion. That being said, I do want to read a couple of different really beautiful lines. Um, I don't really think they're spoilers, but if you don't want to read further, that's fine. I just definitely recommend this book but I want to read a couple sentences um the Bogota which is Colombia's capital the Bogota of Elena and Mauro's childhoods were another country than the one that Dalia knew to the child bombings and killings were mostly faraway occurrences guerrilla occupied territories or distant campo villages death tallies mere ambers on news feeds the hurricane of violence of the 80s and 90s was a specter in magazine retrospects horror written with near nostalgia depicted on telenovelas nothing Dalia sheltered as she was believed she needed to fear. In Bogota, a girl of Talia's age could almost forget the terror, pretend it was happening in another country across the continent, that the faces of the disappeared had nothing in common with her schoolmates, families, and the hardened expressions of children kidnapped or orphaned into fighting the nameless war could not have just as easily been hers. Mauro and Alita City of Clouds was now a place where tourists came to dance and drink without the 
threat of death. The last broad-scale civilian targeted bombing the capital had seen came the year before Talia was born, when their family was already on the northern continent. But her parents' generation was raised in a time when the Andean air tasted of gunfire. The middle towards the end of the book, you do also get the perspective of the two siblings that live in the U.S. It's funny because both Talia, who lives in Colombia, grew up there and kind of felt like an outsider to the rest of her family. Feels like the grass is greener, whereas the kids in the U.S. feel like, feel like she's some lost treasure. So I want to read that really quick because it's really beautiful. Um, this is from the point of view of one of her siblings. If I were completely honest, I'd tell Talia I've always been jealous of her. She might think me nuts since from where she stands it might look like, like Nando and I got the better life deal while she was stuck with our drunk dad and our dying abuela. But I sensed our mother saw Talia as her lost treasure, something she lives her whole life in hope of reclaiming. That even her two children holding on to her as she slept after our father was gone when he got deported. Um, the child our mother most loved was the one she couldn't touch because she had sent her away. This video is all over the place. I apologize for getting so emotional. Basically, the protagonist is trying to get to the U.S. to be reunited with her mother and her two siblings who are older than her but her dad is still stuck in Colombia because he doesn't have his paperwork and he has kind of a darker past he's made some mistakes and that's unfortunately affecting him coming into the country so it alternates in terms of perspective so you do see kind of her parents fall in love their story which was probably my favorite part if I'm being honest was seeing how her mother and her father met in Colombia both from very similar backgrounds and dealing with trying to provide their children with a better life like I said before I feel like it really resonated with me it doesn't spoon feed you any information I feel like it's very much show and not tell which I can definitely appreciate to really go into why they're separated um, it's something that it just works better as you read along uh, I don't want to spoil anything it was hard to read sometimes because it is like one thing after another of uh, facing discrimination feeling like a minority feeling like you don't belong feeling like you're always gonna be um, isolated from other people so it is a beautiful read and I'm really happy with the ending. I didn't think it's not a perfect ending, like a perfect ending with a big bow and like families like happily ever after, even though there is, um, obviously I don't want to spoil it. So I don't want to say that it's not a happy ending, but I don't want to say that it is a happy ending. Um, it ends very imperfectly, but I think it's very realistic to the trials and tribulations that people really go through when they're coming into this country. So I'm dying to check out all of her other works um, because I'm in love with this writing style and I've heard a lot of great things about her other novels. So I'm ready to check all of those books out out once I get a job because you know middle of a pandemic here but yes definitely recommend it I'm sorry I got emotional I didn't mean to um I thought I had cried it out yesterday it's just a really touching book and I feel like if you read it you'll definitely understand where I'm coming from and yeah I think that's pretty much it let me know how you feel down below have you read any good books lately how are you doing um and if you don't like book content don't worry we're gonna go back to our regular scheduled programming um later this week so until next time bye